In this video, I'll be making the argument that Linux is actually easier to use than Windows for casual users. In fact, Linux is so easy that even your grandma can use it. Now I know this might trigger some people, so before you leave an angry comment calling me a computer nerd or whatever, I encourage you to watch the entire video first. And of course, at the end of the day it is personal preference, but I do think there are some objective comparisons that can be made. Now when I say casual users, what I mean is people who just use their computer for basic tasks such as browsing the web, working on spreadsheets, doing some light photo editing, and basic stuff like that. But when it comes to gamers, content creators, and professionals, in those cases I think it depends and I'll speak more about those use cases later. Now the reason why I'm making this video is to dispel some common myths and frankly misinformation against Linux, where some people go so far as to say you need a CS degree just to use it, and that you're forced to use the command line for everything, and other ridiculous claims which simply aren't true. Sure, Linux gives you the freedom to do whatever you want, which can be a double-edged sword, but nobody is forcing you to customize your system or even to use the command line you can completely avoid it if you want. And even though some of these criticisms might have been true 10 years ago, they're no longer true today and haven't been for years. Now for this comparison I've chosen Linux Mint, since that seems to be the most recommended distro for new users, but any of the other popular Ubuntu based distros will provide a very similar experience including Kubuntu which is my personal favorite but I decided to mix things up today and use Mint instead. Alright, so let's start with the installation process. After downloading and flashing Mint to a USB drive, all you need to do is select the disk you want to install to, choose your username and password, and then wait for it to complete the installation. But Windows 11 on the other hand isn't quite as easy. For example, choosing the installation disk isn't intuitive and takes longer. On Mint, all I had to do was select Erase Disk and then choose the disk. But on Windows, you're given this menu which requires you to manually delete all the partitions on a given disk before you can install to it. Also, it's not very clear which disk is which. They're simply listed as Disk 0, Disk 1, and so on. So in order to determine the disk, you need to look at all the partitions on that disk, find the biggest partition, and then determine which disk it is by its size. Which can be confusing, especially if you have multiple disks of the same size in your system. With all the resources Microsoft has available, you think they could have created an easier interface here. But not only that, you also need to worry about whether or not your motherboard has secure boot and TPM enabled, which is a major problem for older devices. Microsoft also forces you to log into an online account as well. Now there are hacks to get around these requirements such as using an LTSC version, disconnecting from the internet before installing, and some hacks even involve entering a bunch of commands into a terminal. Isn't that ironic? The Linux haters are always using the command line as a reason why normal users should never consider Linux, but yet here are a bunch of Windows guides telling users to enter commands into a terminal. And it's not just for these installation hacks. But Microsoft actually recommends entering certain commands for general maintenance as well. <laughs> but anyway. Of course, another drawback of using Windows is that you'll need to spend money on an activation key to unlock all the features and to avoid this annoying message here. So when it comes to the installation process, Linux is the clear winner and I don't think that's debatable. Even if you don't mind purchasing Windows or making an online account, these are additional steps that make the overall installation process longer. Now let's talk about drivers. Well it turns out the Linux kernel already provides all the drivers for your system straight out of the box. No need to install any chipset drivers for your motherboard or GPU drivers, they're all included by default which isn't the case for Windows. Sure Windows comes with generic drivers that give basic functionality, but if you want to use your GPU for games or use its hardware encoder for video applications, you'll need to manually install the drivers. But driver support on Linux isn't perfect. For example, even though Nvidia GPUs work great for the most part, they still could use some work. However, the focus of this video is on basic PC users, not gamers. 
So in this context, I'd say NVIDIA works fine. Also, there are certain niche devices that don't have driver support, including some capture cards from Elgato. But again, I think these devices fall out of the scope for basic PC users. When it comes to the built-in peripherals in desktops and laptops, and USB peripherals such as webcams and audio interfaces, and things a basic user would have, the vast majority of these devices work out of the box on Linux, and you can't get much easier than that. So when it comes to drivers, I think Linux wins here too. So now let's move on to installing software. And as an example, let's install OBS Studio. Even though casual users probably don't stream or need capture software, let's just use it as an example. On Linux Mint, all I need to do is go to the software manager, search for OBS Studio, and then click install. Then click continue and enter your password. It's as simple as that. Also, like I said, the GPU drivers are already installed, so I am able to use the hardware encoder straight out of the box. Now, Windows, on the other hand, doesn't have a centralized software manager, so you'll need to go to your web browser, search for the software you want, manually download the installer, run it, and then click Next a bunch of times until it's finally installed. Now, to be fair, this process is still easy and anyone can do it, but if we're being honest here, the process is easier and quicker on Linux. But now what about other software that a basic PC user would need, such as a web browser, a PDF viewer, an office suite, maybe a photo editing program, and stuff like that? Well, it turns out all these are already included in Linux Mint, which means your basic PC user doesn't really need to worry about installing software. But even if they do need additional software, everything is available in an easy to use software manager. Now while Windows also comes with most of these straight out of the box, it doesn't come with Microsoft Office since you'll need to purchase that separately. But of course you also have the option of installing free and open source software such as LibreOffice, which is the Office suite that comes with Linux Mint. So when it comes to installing software, I think Linux is slightly easier since everything can be installed from the software manager. So now let's move on to updating your system. This process is incredibly easy on Mint. All you need to do is click on the update manager and then click install updates. Not only does this update your system software, it also updates all your other installed software as well. This isn't the case with Windows though. Whenever you update Windows, it's only updating the system software. If you want to update a specific application, then you'll need to open it up and check for updates. If you want to update your GPU drivers, then you'll need to open up that app and update through there. And the same goes for every other application that you install. Objectively speaking, it seems to me Linux is the clear winner here since everything can be updated at once and it can be done very easily. Alright, so hopefully by now I've convinced you that Linux is actually easier to use than Windows for average users who aren't doing anything special. If not, then feel free to drop a comment and explain why you don't agree. And likewise, if you agree with me, then feel free to leave your thoughts and anything else I might have forgotten here. But now I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about some other use cases. Let's start with gaming. Like I've shown in some of my previous videos, gaming works extremely well on Linux and is easy to get set up. And depending on the game, it might even perform better than Windows. But as most of us know, Linux gaming isn't quite perfect yet, and that's mainly because of anti-cheat support. If you play one of these multiplayer games that has an incompatible anti-cheat engine, then it won't work on Linux at the moment. But the good news is that not all anti-cheats are incompatible with Linux. Some of them work perfectly fine, and more and more developers have been making the decision to use one of these compatible anti-cheats. So let's hope this trend continues. But when it comes to ease of use, it turns out Linux can actually be easier than Windows, depending on which distro you use. For example, SteamOS provides a console-like experience for the Steam Deck, and now supports other handheld consoles as well. But if you're using a desktop PC, then you'll want to use a distro such as Bazite or Chimera OS, if you're looking for a console-like experience which is easier to use than Windows. 
or you can install a more general purpose distro such as Linux Mint, which will provide a similar experience as Windows when it comes to Steam games. But if you use other game launchers such as Epic Games or Battle.net, then they'll still work on Linux, but you'll need to run them through an application such as Lutris or Bottles, which don't always provide a seamless experience like Steam does. These apps work well, but there's a chance you might occasionally encounter an issue that requires you to change the runner or something else. So when it comes to having an easy gaming experience, it depends on which distro you choose and if you use game launchers other than Steam. In some cases, Linux can be easier, and in other cases, Windows will be easier. Now let's spend a minute talking about content creation and other professional applications. When it comes to video editors, Linux can be just as easy as Windows is. Sure, you don't have access to Adobe products, but that's probably a good thing if you value your self-respect. A popular alternative that does work on Linux is DaVinci Resolve, which is a good choice for professionals. Or if you're like me and don't need anything fancy, there are a few great open source alternatives such as Shotcut and KDEN Live. Now let's talk about music production. Reaper is a very powerful and popular DAW that works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. In addition to Reaper, Ardour is another popular DAW for Linux. In both cases, it's possible to use software such as Yabridge to install Windows VST plugins and run them in these DAWs. However, installing plugins through Yabridge isn't super straightforward and requires you to enter commands in the terminal. So if you're into music production and don't want to bother with the command line, then I admit that Linux probably isn't for you. But if you're someone who doesn't mind tinkering around a little bit, then yeah, Linux absolutely is viable for music production. Now when it comes to other professional use cases, then it depends on what you're doing. In many cases, I'm sure you can find an open source alternative. But with that said, there still might be some cases where you're better off just sticking to Windows. For example, if you use SolidWorks or Autodesk Fusion, then the only alternative is FreeCAD, which has a steep learning curve and might not provide all the features you need. While it is possible to run Fusion through bottles, the experience isn't perfect, so this is one area where you're probably better off sticking to Windows or running Windows in a VM. But to be honest, this is the only example I can think of based on my personal experience. Also, one last thing I want to mention is the argument that most people are already familiar with Windows, so they should just stick to it, but I don't think this argument holds up. Every time Windows upgrades to a new version, they completely change the layout of the menus and settings, which takes time to get used to. So if you can adapt to that, then you shouldn't have any issues adapting to Linux. Also, nobody criticizes macOS for not being exactly like Windows. Everybody understands and accepts that Macs are different, so I'm not sure why some people expect Linux to be exactly the same as Windows. The fact that Linux can run Windows games and some Windows applications is almost a miracle, to be honest. And it's not something that should be expected from a different operating system. But anyway, I just wanted to mention a few other potential use cases, but I'll stop here since the focus of this video was on average users. Now my final thoughts on this is that it's interesting how Linux has been consistently improving over the years in every regard. While Microsoft has been seemingly going backwards and digging themselves into a hole for a number of reasons. In my opinion, I think this just goes to show that many giant corporations have created a soul-sucking environment that isn't conducive for excellent results. That's not to say they don't hire any talented employees, but perhaps over time, the talented employees simply stop caring and lose motivation because of how draining these corporate environments can be. But anyway, that's all I've got for today. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to share your thoughts in the comments if you agree, disagree, or if I left anything out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.